Next, purchase cycle. Now a brief in, uh, revision of a purchase cycle. If in any department of our, or, our organization, we want to buy some products, we need some raw material. For example, storekeeper, he checked the inventory records and he decided that we need to buy some raw material. So what he will be doing, storekeeper will prepare a purchase requisition. And this purchase requisition then storekeeper will send it to procurement department or purchasing department. Now, if procurement department already have the suppliers, so they will place a purchase order to our supplier. But if we do not have a supplier, then procurement department will issue RFQ, request for quotations. And this document they will going to sell, they will going to send to all their potential suppliers. In return, suppliers or potential suppliers, they will submit quotations to the procurement department. And based on those quotations, whatever supplier is the most suitable one, procurement department will be selecting that supplier. And then to the selected supplier, they will place a purchase order. After that, we send the purchase order to our supplier. The supplier will start the processing. They will get the goods ready and then they will dispatch the goods. When supplier dispatch the goods, sometimes they also send dispatch note as well. The purpose of dispatch note is sometimes it take a little while to deliver the goods. So the purpose of dispatch note is that supplier will tell to the customer that I dispatch the goods and that is the expected date of receipt, maybe after 10 days, 15 days, 20 days, depend upon the distance. So after dispatch note, now we got the idea on which date we can expect the delivery. With the delivery, we will be receiving delivery note. Delivery will come into our warehouse. The storekeeper will see the delivery note, will see the purchase order. They will go into compare and see how many goods we actually ordered, how many goods we actually received. If there is any difference, then he will be notifying it to the supplier. After that, the same storekeeper will also be producing uh, goods received note because the purpose of delivery note is, this is the document made by the supplier and sent to the customer. Storekeeper will see the delivery note, actually or physically count the inventory, will compare with the delivery note, sign the delivery note, and this delivery note will go back to the supplier. So to confirm the receipt in, of the goods in the warehouse, the storekeeper then need to produce goods received. And on goods received note, then it will be showing that how many goods we receive against which purchase order we receive the good, against what dispatch note we receive the goods and so on. And once the goods have been received in our warehouse, then after that, the storekeeper will inform to the accounts department that we received the goods against this purchase order. This is the goods received note. Now accounts department, first they will be having the copy of purchase order. Second, they will keep the copy of goods received note. And third, when they will be receiving the invoice from the supplier, they will check the invoice against purchase order and goods received note that order was actually placed or not, goods actually received in our warehouse. And after that, the accounts department will going to make the payment through cash or bank. This is what we call purchase cycle. And every time our organization, if they want to buy something, the same purchase cycle will going to run. All these documents which are involved in the purchase cycle, these are what we called supporting documents and in each step of the transaction because we know that any purchase will complete in series of steps so it is important that for each step we need to produce the supporting documents and these supporting documents then we need to record it into our accounting system this is the way how purchase cycle basically work clear with this thing uh, yes, sir. So these are all supporting documents, the ones that have been listed here. All these are supporting documents. What is supporting document? That any, whenever we are performing any transaction, so each transaction can have series of steps. For each step, we need to produce a document 
and that document will be considered as a supporting document. Clear? Okay, so this one are the main one. Then. All are, see, um, these documents are not necessary that in any typical organization purchase cycle, all of the documents will be involved. It depends from business to business. So the importance of any document will depend from the business. Like purchase order will be common with all the organization. Goods received notes sometime, um, the storekeeper will just take the copy of a delivery note and that will become um, the goods received note as well, the same copy of a delivery note. So it depends from organization to organization and their procedures. What we are discussing here is an ideal situation. Practical thing, the documents can be even less or more than this. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. Okay. Next, wastage. Now this is a very important element that to estimate our wastage whenever we want to buy raw material. For example, what, is, what will be happening? First, we will be buying the raw material. This raw material will become input for our department. Then this input will be entered into our production department. While this raw material, when we input it into production department, so we are expected to get the output. For example, we input 1000 kilograms of raw material for the production. Let's say one kilogram is required for producing one unit. So if we input 1000 kilograms of raw material, so maybe logically we should be getting 1000 kilo 1000 units of output but for example we got 900 units of output what about the remaining the remaining is what wastage it's very common in our production department that a lot of time we will be having wastage so these 100 units are actually got wasted during our production so whenever if we want to produce now we input 1000 kilograms of raw material. One kilogram is needed to produce one unit, but we are getting the output of 900 units. So if we want to get 1000 units of output, we need to estimate the wastage beforehand. So we need to buy a little bit more or extra kilograms of raw material. So when we input it, some of this will be waste and some will become the output. So to get our desired output, we always need to estimate for the wastage. Now for wastage, remember, there are usually two reasons. One is called normal loss or normal wastage. Second is called abnormal loss or abnormal waste. Normal loss is what? That will occur due to, nat due to because of the natural reasons like evaporation for example you we know that for water some chemicals whenever we are going to boil them or even at room temperature some of the raw material will definitely be evaporating during production this is what normal loss because it arises because of the natural reasons how we can find out it's a normal loss normal loss is such a loss that whenever we are having a production run for each and every production run we will be having some of the normal loss. So means a natural loss. Every time we will be incurring these losses. Abnormal loss is a loss which will occur due to the carelessness, mistake, or error of our employees or any sort of resource. We bought the raw material, labor was taking it from the warehouse and he was taking it to the production department. And by an accident, some of raw material um, uh, um, threw out, out of his hand, for example, or maybe he, we, um, because of the error or mistake of a labor, uh, because of any sort of accident, we lose some of the raw material. So such thing also happens or maybe we input some raw material into our machinery. We were processing it and there was a electricity breakdown or there was a power cut or there was a machinery breakdown. And due to that, we lose some material um, or some work in progress inside the machine. 
because if we are getting a power cut, so maybe whatever raw material is inside the machinery at the moment of power cut, that will go into waste. So such kind of losses will be considered as abnormal losses. So whenever we need to decide how much raw material we need to buy, it is important to consider the wastage. How to estimate the wastage basically? For example, one kilogram of product A is manufactured from one kilogram of material X. So to produce one kilogram of our product A, we need one kilogram of material X in a process where wastage is equal to 3% of the material input, right? This 3% of the material input. How many kilograms of material X are needed in order to produce if we want our output of 100 kilograms of product A? So how much we need to buy? So what will be the equation here? First, we need to determine the input. We need to minus the wastage from the input. And after this wastage, we will get our output. Now in this scenario, we want an output of 100 kilograms. And wastage is how much percent is 3%. Now this is the point to understand that input, we want to find out that how much input we need to buy. This is the required figure. So this will be 100%. So whatever input, whatever amount you will be inputting um, into your production department, out of 100%, 3% will always be a waste and the output we will be getting will be 97%. So okay. if we input 100% yes. of the raw material, out of this 100%, 3% will be a waste and 97% will be our output. Yes. So we can say that 100 minus 3% output will be 97%. This is what? After the wastage. So now we can estimate the uh, input, how much input we need to buy. Yes. So 100 kilograms is equal to 97%. So how much will be for the 100% or for the input? Instead of writing 100%, let me write here input. So 100 kilograms, this is output. It has a waste, uh, it have a weightage of 97% and multiply, we need to, what is required, the required is input of 100%. So multiply with 100. So how much will be the kilograms here? So 100 divided by 97 into 100. This will be one zero, if I round it, one zero three kilograms. So what does it mean? That to produce 100 kilograms of output, we need to buy 103 kilograms of output. Why? Because there will be a wastage of 3%. So this 3% will be the wastage of input. So 103 into 3%. So 103 into 3% wastage will be 3.09 or just 3. So 103 minus 3, we will get the output of 100 kilograms. What is the biggest mistake what students do that when wastage is given as 3%, they take 3% of the output if output is given. Never do that. Wastage will always be on the basis of the input, right? Not on the basis of output. Clear with this thing? Okay. 